The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the guests and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of the hosts and creators of this program. <laughs> Welcome to a very special Halloween edition of the Pet Buzz. Not that kind of buzz. <laughs> Sorry, master. Ay, ay, ay. Anyway, on today's pet bu- uh, program, you'll hear haunting pet stories, learn about black cats, and be the first to hear about the latest and greatest in Halloween costumes for you and your furry friends. <laughs> now, here are your hosts for today's Halloween extravaganza. It's Miss Charlotte Jekyll and Dr. Michael Hyde. Oh, yeah, I like them <laughs> for lunch. Welcome to our show, highlighting the spookiest time of the year for pets. Happy Halloween. So I'm going to get right into it. What's coming up on the show? Well, let the countdown begin. <laughs> Number four. In segment four, we're talking with the Ohio State College of Veterinary Medicine professor veterinarian Dr. Jason Stahl, who will talk to us about how to reduce the spread of frightening diseases at Halloween events. <laughs> Number three. Don't miss Layla Morgan Wild. Talk about the mythology and adoption awareness of black cats in segment three. <laughs> Number two. And in seg two, we're going to dish about celebrity pets and also talk about some Halloween tips from your emails, Facebook posts, and Twitter tweets. <laughs> Number one. Our first guest is right here, but first, please note that costumes for pets are picture-perfect way to get your furry, four-legged best friend in the Halloween spirit. And joining us today to talk about pet costumes is Howard Beige. CEO of Ruby's Costume Company, the world's largest designer, manufacturer, and distributor of Halloween costumes and accessories. Howie, welcome to the Pet Buzz today. Thank you very much, Dr. Fleck, and hello to Charlotte, too. Hi. <laughs> hey, can you give us a little history about Ruby's? Actually, uh, Ruby's is a third-generation company today. It was actually started by my mother and father back in 1951. And we've been running it since uh, 72. My dad passed away, and today it's uh, got to be a much bigger company with about 2,600 employees around the world. So it's a large family business is what we like to say. Who's Ruby? Was that your mom? That's what everybody always assumed, believe it or not. <laughs> but uh, my dad's name was Ruben, and everybody called him Ruby. Okay. The, the company is named after my dad. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so generally, what are the most popular costumes for pets for Halloween? Very popular this year for Halloween, of course, is Lion King, and all Toy Story is very popular. Also, superheroes. Superheroes are just as popular with pets as they are with uh, children and adults. So it's everything from the new Marvel Endgame movie, also Spider-Man, and also Captain Marvel for the female dogs as well. So, Howie, what are some of the other hot animal costumes? So, some of the animal costumes that sell very well are things like a teddy bear, uh, our generic lion mane, which you've probably seen in some TV commercials over the years, uh, does very well. Pumpkins, of course, do very well for Halloween. Uh, believe it or not, bunnies do very well for Halloween as well, and bumblebees. Uh, also, we have... Uh, Costumes like a ladybug. So we have hundreds of designs of other uh, generic characters that sell very well. When we say hundreds, Howard has hundreds and hundreds of costumes. Well, if you've just joined us, we're talking with Howie Beige from Ruby's Costume Company about Halloween and this year's hottest costumes for you and your pet. You know, people love to dress up like characters in movies. And I have to tell you, Grease was one of my favorite movies. So what else is hot in terms of characters from movies? So for this year for movies, in addition to what I mentioned to you, Lion King and Toy Story are very big. Wonder Woman is very big this year as well. Uh, things like 
the Beetlejuice characters, Superman is always very popular, Batman is very popular, Spider-Man is doing very well for us. So these are characters that uh, not only are they very popular on their own, but they fit a family theme as well, which is very important. And every year, some of the perennials are things like the Wizard of Oz characters do mm -hmm. very well. Uh, Grease, we actually happen to have the Greaser jackets, the Pink Ladies jackets, Elvis does well each year, so there really are a host of characters that do well every single year. What about Dumbo and Beauty and the Beast? Beauty and the Beast is doing well. Dumbo was a little bit of a slow start. I got a Dumbo costume. I just ordered it. <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> but I haven't been able to find the Beauty and the Beast costume. I saw that at a show. So I have a huge pet costume collection, Howard. It's ridiculously it's like 300 wow. costumes. So you mentioned cake, I think. That means food. Why are we so obsessed with dressing our pets like food? Uh, yes, food is definitely a big area for us. We do everything from taco costumes, believe it or not. Uh, we have ice cream costumes. Uh, we have costumes that are hot dogs, obviously. Uh, some of the new ones we're doing this year is like a pumpkin spice latte, uh, cookies and milk, okay? Uh, we did a banana costume, a pineapple costume, of course, cheeseburgers. Uh, so there's a large line of food costumes that Ruby's does. You got donuts and sundaes, too. Yes, absolutely. And even a cotton candy costume that looks beautiful. It's got that soft look like a cotton candy would have. Oh, I haven't seen that. I better write that down. Dr. Fleck is like rolling his eyes. The other thing I'd love to mention to you is we do, believe it or not, more sizes in pet costumes than we do in child or adult. Our sizes on pet costumes go from extra small to triple extra large. A lot more sizing available in pet than there is in child, believe it or not, or adult. Yes, what is our priorities these days? For kids. I'm sorry. <laughs> so can you give us some tips about buying costumes for pets? I think uh, one of the things that, uh, some of them are obvious, but one of the things that gets overlooked, quite frankly, is make them part of the family theme. If the family is dressing up as minions, well, we offer that for pets, too. If the family is doing a Wizard of Oz theme, we offer a full selection of Wizard of Oz costumes for pets. And I think that's one of the things that's overlooked that, to me, is the most important, is they belong with dressed the same as the family theme. And as Halloween now is getting closer to the weekend, this year's a Thursday Halloween, next year's a Saturday Halloween because of leap year, you find more and more home parties, you find more and more people dressing up in a common theme. The family, in other words, is dressing as one theme together. Hmm. I think that's the first thing uh, that's most important is what are you going to dress your pet as? And the first question to me is they should be part of the regular family theme. Okay. Other than that, I would say the most important thing is we give very detailed size charts on every one of our packages and ask you to measure things like the dog's chest, his neck to the tail. All this is to help you pick the appropriate size. So I think that is very important in selecting a uh, pet costume as well. So those are two things I think that sometimes get overlooked. So what about those pets that don't enjoy costumes? What else do you offer? We offer a full line of accessories, which are much easier for the pet to wear. It could be a simple hat. It could be a pet wig, headbands. It could be bandanas that go around the neck. We have wings. We have tutus. We have ties for pets even. We offer hundreds of individual accessory items for the pet that doesn't want to wear a full costume. Okay, that's something that they tend to uh, understand. Howie, that was so much fun. Thanks for joining us. That was Howard Beige, CEO of Ruby's, the largest designer, manufacturer, and distributor of costumes throughout the world. If you want to find out more about Ruby's and their great costumes, visit rubies.com. Up next, we're going to be dishing about celebrity pet gossip, followed by some great Halloween questions, all posed to us by you. <laughs> Listening to a very scary and special edition of the Pet Boss. <laughs> you idiot! That's twice now. I can't help it, Master. I, I get carried away.
You are listening to The Pet Buzz with pet trendologist Charlotte Reed and veterinarian Dr. Michael Fleck. We would love to communicate with you via social media. Use the Pet Buzz social media channels on Twitter and Facebook to make a comment or ask a question. Post a picture of your pet on Instagram and tell us about his or her unique personality. You can also write to us at team at thepetbuzz.com. For more information about our show, our guests, and buzzworthy freebies, visit us at thepetbuzz.com. Does your pet have dry, flaky, and itchy skin? Do you find yourself visiting the veterinarian repeatedly because Fido or Fluffy has skin allergies or ear infections? I love animals and want my pets to be healthy. So I asked our vet who recommended EpiPet Ear Cleaner. It's super simple, and it even smells good. Every week, I use it on both my dog and my cat to gently remove wax and debris. (laughs) I even told my friend Aiden to try EpiPet on his dog Sophie, who always had red ears. But not anymore. Now we both have happy and healthy pets. Thanks, EpiPet. Developed by a veterinarian, EpiPet is a revolutionary, high-performance skin and ear care product line made with the finest natural ingredients. EpiPet, for you and your pet, means better pet health. For more information, visit epi-pet.com. Hey, did you know 2.4 million loving cats and dogs in shelters and rescues need our help to find a home? Let's go to the shelterpetproject.org and meet a few are in a shelter near you. Harlo, oh, she's one great listener who loves to hear all your stories. My kind of cat. Shrulo is a sweet, goofy boy who's eager to please. Sounds just like another dog I know. So go to the shelterpetproject.org, search your local shelters and rescues, and go for a cuddle with your next best friend. Adopt. Hey, thank you for joining us on the Pet Buzz this morning. This show is hosted by the dynamic pet duo on Petronologist Charlotte Reed. Okay, so it's time for the celebrity pet dish. It's a bit early, but I can't wait to see the celebrity pet costumes of 2019. I can just tell you celebrities love to dress up their dogs as much as we do. In past years, we've seen The Rock dress up a pooch of his like an octopus. Maybe he does so much, and that's why he likes the octopus costume with so many hands and you know miley cyrus she dressed up her crew of pets like fast food we've got a sunday in there a hamburger a hot dog she even threw in an alien to boot i'm not surprised and jesse ferguson he dressed up the whole family with a bee theme beekeepers and bees i kind of love this upcoming one now demi lovato fresh out of rehab fashioned up her dog to look like the doggy bachelor one year with sweet stuffed animal companion and rose petals not surprised with this one this girl is looking for love and then there's Chrissy Tyne she dressed up her dog Pippa like bacon considering she's the new Martha with a cookware line at Target and I think cookbooks coming out she's got food on the brain and then there's Carly Kloss now if you remember Carly Kloss she's married to Jared Kushner's brother I think his name is Jason she just got married recently and she's a hometown girl from St. Louis so she dressed up one year her dog like a St. Louis Cardinal it's so tiny it fit right inside a baseball glove. Okay, so cowboys are hot now, but when Amanda Siegfried dressed up her dog Flynn, she didn't know that cowboys were going to be hot. So think Yellowstone and Old Town Road, 19 on the uh, music charts. Okay, Paris Hilton dressed up a dog like a taco. I got to tell you, I expected more of Paris. I want to know what you guys are going to dress up your dog like this year. So send us a pic and we'll post it on our The Pet Buzz social media channels. And now we want to answer your questions about Halloween. So Margo from Boston tweets, how can you help your pet stress less on the scary scary holiday well it's a great question margo well you want to keep your dog and cats de-stressed with cbd products try tinctures they're the most abundant in the marketplace it's important to know that digestive health plays a major role in absorbing cbd properly and one company that focuses on that is cbd living pet so their dog and cat tinctures calm pets but also have a proprietary self emulsifying system that promotes the absorption of cbd and omega-3 fatty acids by making these nutrients easier to digest doses vary from 150 milligrams to a thousand milligrams per bottle depending on the size of your pet and moreover they're delicious 
allergen-free flavors will be loved by your fairy friends. So check out CBDLivingPet.com. Okay, so Joni from Wisconsin writes about the smell test. Joni is embarrassed from the cat smell in her home, and she wants to know how to tackle the litter box because of the odors, especially when she's opening and closing the door on Halloween night. Well, Joni... No one wants to smell the cat before they can see the cat, especially like you said, you're opening and closing the door, giving out uh, treats on Halloween night. And thanks to World Best Cat Litter, you don't have to worry. World's Best Cat Litter offers a family of high-performance natural cat litter formulas that harness the power of naturally absorbent corn to deliver outstanding odor control, quick clumping and easy scooping, and long-lasting performance. Moreover, as the number one best-selling natural cat litter, World's Best Cat Litter donates free litter to shelters as part of its annual Give Litter campaign, giving cat parents only the best information when they adopt. World's Best Cat Litter is also also running a win cash meow 25k giveaway that challenges cat lovers to submit photos videos and litter reviews for a shot at winning get this 25k that's 25,000 in cash 2,500 travel voucher and a one-year supply of cat litter what are you waiting for visit their website at worldsbestcatlitter.com to learn more you want to learn about that contest and you want to win Okay, so Herman from Virginia writes that in his condo complex, there are more pets than kids, and the parents want to trick-or-treat with their fur kids. Well, what should he serve? Herman, I'm going to tell you what you can serve. Pets can't enjoy the holiday without being treated well. So check out Red Barn's new beef cuts. They're perfect for four-legged trick-or-treaters stopping by your house. It's grass-fed beef. Slow roasted until a crunchy perfection and cut into bite-sized treats made in the U.S. of A. And for dogs who guard the house, that's the ones who are staying home, while you're out trick-or-treating with the kids or you're at a party, Red Barn's new natural-filled bones, available in three flavors, are an amazing, long-lasting, all-natural chew. The natural act of chewing on these natural, clean, real beef firmer bones help reduce stress, fight boredom, and remove plaque and pups, while the all-natural fillings inside really give them a reason to chew up the night and chew away from the furniture. Visit their website at redbarninc.com. Okay, so next question is posed from Madge from Brooklyn. Brooklyn in the house. And she goes to a lot of community events, but she's worried that others don't take as good care of their dogs like she does, and she wants some preventative health tips. So what I'm going to say is, Madge, that is a great question, and it's a great observation. So to keep your pets healthy at Community Monster Mashes, bring your own gear, especially a water bowl, because you don't want to be drinking out of a communal water bowl and possibly picking up or spreading diseases to pets back home in your neighborhood on your floor or you know, just around the circles that you kind of hang out with. So I suggest try Loving Pet Products Bella Roma Travel Bowls. They're PBA free and they're dishwasher safe. So check this out. They're a grated bowl, but they have legs so they don't collapse. And this is a surefire way to keep your pets safe. Visit their website at lovingpetproducts.com. Also, you know, bring your bring your poop bags because scooping the poop is another way which you can definitely prevent the spread of disease. Okay, now let's talk about some Fright Night and the day after. Okay, so Dave from Florida posts that these days it's not uncommon for dogs to trick-or-treat with the families, but you don't want them leaving their mark up to your home. So Dave wants to know what he can do before and after so that dogs do not leave their mark around his property okay so dave check this out so before and after so before halloween starts and the next day try some angry orange it's a commercial grade pet owner remover with a citrus scent so it's definitely going to smell good and it's derived from the oil found in orange peels which means it's actually 100 percent natural made with safe ingredients okay also it's made in the us of a It's a hometown product. So you want to use it on any surface like fabric, carpet, walls, wood floors, garage floors, trash cans, bathrooms, everywhere. So up to your door. And you want to follow the instructions because you got to always follow instructions with cleaners. This way you can clean up the area so they won't smell your dogs up to your front door. And then after, just in case, one of the dogs 
peas because he might smell your dog and he might want to mark that territory as his own. But not only do that, I would spray the path up to my front door, but I would also clean up the sidewalk or the curb in front of your house. That way you're not going to always have dogs stopping by because that odor will be removed thanks to Angry Orange. And you can just go to Amazon and find Angry Orange. And it's also, the other thing is, it has to work well because it's gotten amazing reviews. It's one of the top selling and fastest growing pet products on Amazon with thousands of five star reviews. So remember these helpful products when planning for the spookiest time of the year. So more of the pet buzz very soon, but you can't wait for my I Likey of the Week. Stay tuned. Don't die on us just yet. More of a very special Halloween edition of the Pet Buzz is just around a very creepy corner. Oh, oh I can't wait. You are listening to The Pet Buzz with pet trendologist Charlotte Reed and veterinarian Dr. Michael Fleck. We love to communicate with you via social media. Use The Pet Buzz social media channels on Twitter and Facebook to make a comment or ask a question. Post a picture of your pet on Instagram and tell us about his or her unique personality. You can also write to us at team at thepetbuzz.com. For more information about our show, our guests, and our buzzworthy freebies, visit us at thepetbuzz.com. Hi, I'm Brad Garrett. In 2007, the investigation of the Humane Society of the United States exposed the link between pet stores and puppy mills. Large puppy mill operations were busted in Maine, Oklahoma, Texas, and Virginia. Bottom line, puppy mills are cruel and their puppies are often sick. So do yourself a favor and go to your local shelter for your next dog. You'll get an inoculated, already fixed dog for almost nothing. So you'll not only save some money, but you'll also save a life. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the Pet Buzz at the spookiest time of the year. This is our special Halloween edition. And now for my I Likey of the Week. So I want to talk about dogs and cats who don't wear costumes. So my I Likey for the Week is a Halloween-themed leash harness or collar by UpCountry. And they have them available for dogs and cats. So for dogs, check out the Boo Halloween or Spooky Town and Trick or Treat leashes and collars. Upcountry's ribbon collars, leads, and harnesses come in a variety of lengths and widths. So wide is one inch. That's usually for a larger dog. Narrow five-eighths is fine for a medium-sized dog and a teacup half an inch. And the ribbon collars are made from really strong nylon webbing with sewn-on polyester nylon ribbons. I like the fact that the ribbons are Stain and fray resistant. They're really designed to last a lifetime. All the collars and leads. Hardware is cast, not welded brass for the extra strength. And the buckles are Coast Guard approved for high weight hold. So check that out. Also, the best part is they're machine washable and cold. And then you can air dry. Okay, so for feline friends, choose a Halloween cat collar or cat harness with a four-foot lead. So I'm saying the Halloween, meaning that is the pattern that's available. And the collars have a breakaway clasp for feline safety. And the clasp will release under pressure to assure safe outdoor play. But it's durable for daily wear. And also upcountry harness and lead for cats are the perfect and safe way to take your cat on an outdoor adventure. They're made with the same lightweight but strong webbing that make up the cat collars. And the feline harnesses are adjustable with two quick release buckles for active cats. Additionally, all the harness sets come with four foot matching leads. I'm going to put pictures up on our website so you can see what these great Halloween dog collars or cat collars, dog collars, and harnesses for cats look like. You can also check everything out at upcountryinc.com and really get some more information. I think it's definitely worth the spend, especially at this time of the year. This is our special Halloween edition. You know, black cats have played a major role in folklore, superstition, and mythology for centuries. In the Middle Ages, they were believed to be witches incarnate or witches familiar, the latter of which is an animal-shaped spirit or demon 
thought to serve as a witch or a magician as a spy and a companion. That sounds like a Harry Potter animagus. Well, anyway, strangely, many of these old superstitions still exist today around Halloween. The mythology and the lore around black cats are especially prominent. Mm-hmm. And joining us today is Layla Morgan Wild. She's a cat expert and the author of Black Cats Tell All, True Tales, and Inspiring Images. She is also the founder of Black Cat Awareness Month. Cool. Layla, welcome to the Pet Buzz. Thank you so much for being here. So before we get started, can you tell us about some of the mythology and the folklore about black cats? Oh, don't like there are just so many, um, <laughs> from being just simply bad luck to omens of death. But nothing is either black and white when it comes to black cats. Uh, for every positive, there's a negative. There are sometimes good luck, bad luck, um, sometimes all in the same in the same thing. So, um, long history of cats um, on uh, on the high seas, the sailors and pirates, because of their uh, often they're polydactyl, meaning they have extra toes to grip, um, you know, ropes and to stay on the ships firmly. So that kind of thing. And the and the wives of the sailors and the, would be keeping a black cat at home for good luck as well. Interesting. Um, in some countries, it's good luck to give a black cat to uh, a couple getting married. So I like to think that um, depending on what country you live in, again, it's so all over the map. But <laughs> seriously, <laughs> it's part of the allure and the mystery of black cats of um, why it's just not black and white when it comes to black cats. Shades of gray. Well, anyway, to combat the incorrect beliefs, October is Black Cat Awareness Month. Tell us why you founded this awareness campaign. Well, I've always advocated for the last, oh, goodness, um, many years uh, since I've been uh, working with cats, but since I've been blogging at Cat Wisdom 101 since 2011. So, yeah, that started informally around that time and then formally around 2016. Um Number of reasons, just seeing cats, uh, beautiful black cats being overlooked in shelters time and time a day. When I just actually saw it personally, hands on, the, the remarks like, what about this cat? Uh, no, they're black. Um, okay, so. Wow. Um, yeah, you know, exactly. That kind of, it, it, it's, it's so blatant. And then I was starting this huge project, a global project for the book, and I really wanted a global global perspective of black cat lovers. How were they different? But could we all come together? And we have. We have an amazing community on Instagram of amazing black cat lovers. Oh, i got to check that out. Is that what it is? Hashtag amazing black cats? Yeah, I, my hashtag is actually black cats of IG and also just Black Cats Tell All is our other hashtag on Instagram and of course we've got Black Cat Awareness Month as our other hashtag. Well if you've just joined us we're talking with Layla Morgan Wild about why black cats are less adoptable than other felines. Dr. Fleck you had a question. I was just going to comment you know a couple years ago we went to a maritime museum we have here in the Cortez Village in Florida Mm -hmm. and remember it was about cats the black cats with the sailors? Well, it was about cats in general, yeah. but there were a lot of black cats, and I thought that was cool because they were on fishing boats. Yeah. So one of the things that for you, for those of you who don't know, in um, in Manatee County in Bradenton, there is one of the oldest fil- fishing villages in the United States. It's called Cortez Village. It's still a working fishing village where people live in wooden wood clap houses, um, and there's a little museum there yeah. and this museum w- with this particular exhibit, there were all types of cats, but predominantly a lot of black cats and they were either on fishing boats, small fishing boats all the way up to U S maritime or Marine, you know, big giant destroyer mm-hmm. boats. So I thought that was really interesting. Intriguing. You, it was very, extremely very intriguing. intriguing. Now you had a question about the shelters. What were you going to say, Dr. Fleck? You know, have shelters made a conscious decision to not, adopt black cats during the month of October? Uh, You know, this has been a controversial uh, topic where a few years ago there was a trend towards not adopting, and that's been shifting because what's happening is 
the incidence of animal cruelty, um, whether it's perpetrated towards black cats or not, it happens all year round. It's isolated and rare, but it does happen, as we well know. Uh, however, um, some of the shelters are now thinking, why are we missing out on an entire month where we could be adopting these cats to perfectly good homes? And that's why the, the mood is shifting. Um, so I think we're seeing now more event adoption events around um, starting actually right now where um, there's a special focus on black cats, uh, you know, uh, maybe a reduced uh, adoption fee, that kind of thing. We'll see more cats get adopted. Let's hope so. Okay, last question. How can cat lovers celebrate Black Cat Awareness Month? Now, I know you mentioned posting on Instagram. What are some of the other things they can do? Oh, well, uh, go to your shelter and see what black cats are available and not necessarily adopt. Um, what's so needed is um, foster homes, um, you know, foster, foster a cat. And then obviously, you know, if <laughs> their charms will work on you and you may end up adopting them. So, um, yes, absolutely. Creating any kind of awareness, um, definitely by my book um, or, um, you know, have a contest. I'm not going to be having a contest myself for, uh, you know, uh, probably Halloween costumes. And as you may know, Halloween is like the biggest holiday now after Christmas. So it's 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 a huge time. It's huge. huge. Well, on that note, we're going to wrap it up. But thank you so much for joining us today, Layla. We wish you and your feline friends a happy Halloween. Halloween. Everyone, that was Layla Morgan Wild, <laughs> author of Black Cats Tell All, True Tales and Inspiring Images, discussing Black Cat Awareness Month. Check out her website at catwisdom101.com. She is a, she, and now check this out. This is what I love on her website. She's got a great global directory of cat cafes. Stay tuned for more ghoulish content. <laughs> Don't forget to check us out on YouTube on the World Wide Web. Oh, Master, that must have taken some pretty big spiders to make a web as big as the whole world. Oh, yeah. It's so hard to find good heaven. When your doctor recommended omega fatty acids as a daily supplement, he told you that they promoted better heart, brain, skin, joint, and immune system health. Well, doesn't it make sense for your pet to have the same health benefits? EpiPet Whole Fish Treat, an all-natural smoked fish supplement, is 100% bioavailable, bringing your pets the nutrients they need to keep them healthy and happy. We first heard about EpiPet at our local rescue shelter where our family adopted Lucy, a 10-year-old yellow lab. She was in tough shape, but we noticed within just a few days how soft and thick her coat was getting. She has more energy now, loves to chase her favorite tennis ball, and most importantly, how happy and healthy Lucy is now. We could not be happier. Thanks, EpiPet. To order better pet health for your dog or cat, just visit epi-pet.com. That's epi-pet.com. Trinologist Charlotte Reed. And I'm veterinarian Dr. Michael Fleck. We are urban, suburban, and, and country. country. During the spookiest time of the year, pet parents are celebrating Halloween at large scale events with their dogs and other dogs and their families. But it's important to note that while Fido's passing a few hours at a pet parade or an event, sharing a water bowl or sniffing pet waste can lead to the spread of illness. Moreover, carrying disease back to a pet's home and or neighborhood can produce an expensive vet bill, abandonment of a pet, or even worse. Joining us today to discuss how to reduce the spread of disease at pet events is veterinarian Dr. Jason Stoll from The Ohio State University College of Veterinary Medicine. Dr. Stoll, welcome back to the Pet Buzz today. Thank you. Always a pleasure to be here. You know, when you have many dogs in specific areas like a Halloween pet parade, are there opportunities to spread disease? 
Absolutely. And I think pet parents often forget this. Uh, we certainly think about people being able to spread disease, but our pets are no different. So they can spread diseases either through direct contact with other animals, um, but even through things like ticks and fleas and contaminated objects, so toys or bowls or, or anything like that, including even our own hands. Interesting. So, Doc, can you name some of the diseases or the outbreaks that can spread, especially at some of these events? Absolutely. So this is an area that has gotten a lot of attention uh, uh, recently. So people might have heard of diseases like canine influenza virus. So there have been a number of outbreaks throughout the entire United States and other parts of the world that have involved this virus. So dogs spreading uh, this particular type of flu virus to other dogs. Um, people might have heard, of course, of kennel cough or bordetella, which is very infectious and can spread from dog to dog. There have also been some diseases like Campylobacter that have actually been spread uh, between dogs, but also even to people. A lot of diseases. You, me- you mentioned, yeah, you mentioned these diseases. Uh, do vaccines help, and what vaccines would you recommend? Vaccines are an important component of protecting our pets, and so it's obviously very important for anyone with a pet to have a conversation with their veterinarian. They can discuss with them the most appropriate vaccinations and preventative measures for that particular pet and its risks. Um, when we think about things like uh, animals like dogs, there are some what we call core vaccines. So those vaccines that all dogs should receive no matter what. And those include uh, diseases such as uh, prevention against distemper virus, parvovirus, hepatitis, and of course, rabies, which is obviously one that we all get concerned about. But there are also additional vaccines, uh, depending on the dog and depending how, what types of environment it's going to be in, if it's going to be in a daycare, if it's going to be, for instance, taking part in things like Halloween parades and things like that. So there are other vaccines such as canine influenza virus vaccine, we have a Lyme vaccine, and we have a leptospirosis vaccine. So depending on the animal, you can, uh, your, your veterinarian and healthcare provider can help you best decide those things. Great information. Well, if you've just joined us, we're speaking with Dr. Jason Stahl about reducing diseases at pet events. What recommendations do you suggest to avoid spreading disease? I mean, let's break it down. What should dog owners do or think about when they're going to these events? And what should canine event coordinators and others think about? So as a dog owner, of course, my concerns are going to be, how do I protect my dog? And so part of that is making sure that our dog stays healthy, they are regularly visited, um, res- regularly visiting their veterinarian, and that we that they're up to date on all the various components such as parasite treatments, uh, flea and tick control, and of course vaccinations. But there's some things that we can also do. So um, when we're taking our animals to those areas, of course, if our animal's sick, they shouldn't be going, right? We wouldn't want to take our kid to an area where uh, if, our, if our child's ill, same thing's true for our pets. So acting abnormally, coughing, sneezing, something that's otherwise uh, uh, different, we shouldn't be bringing them. Secondarily, we should wash our hands while we're there. So if we're having contact with other types of pets that are on our own, we want to definitely be washing our hands using an alcohol-based hand sanitizer, something like that, but so that we don't bring those types of disease-causing organisms back to our house or back to our other pet. And then finally, it's really up to us to do our homework, right? So we need to know the risks and what we're doing to with our pets. So if we're going to be taking that, our animal to a parade or to a dog park or to or even to a boarding facility, what are the requirements and what are the asks that that particular uh, event has and how can what are the risks by bringing our pet? On the flip side, if we're in charge of that event, we need we have some some pretty big shoes to fill there, right? So our idea here is we want to try and make it very very clear what the requirements are for animals that are going to be participating. Are we going to have certain vaccination requirements? Do we want to make sure that the pets can play well together? So, you know, animals that are aggressive shouldn't be there. Um, And really making that uh, very, very clear to people and and helping people to best be able to participate in that. So making sure that there are ways for people to clean up after their pet um, and have very, very clear expectations. Great, great information. We've talked about the concern of spreading disease between pet to pet, but what about spreading disease to humans? Is that possible? Oh, absolutely. And this is an area, again, that's that's getting more and more attention. So I think everybody or most people are sure are are aware of diseases like rabies. Uh, Unfortunately, 
in the United States. It's not one that uh, we have to be too worried about in terms of uh, what happens with people. It just doesn't get diagnosed very often, uh, which is great. Uh, but we have lots of we do lots of things to try and prevent that. So, for instance, by vaccinating our pets. Um, but there also are a number of other uh, diseases that can be transmitted. So we have bacteria that are easily transmitted. So as I mentioned, uh, there's actually a very very large outbreak in people that had contact with dogs and specifically dogs at um, coming from various types of pet stores that developed a disease uh, called Campylobacter. Uh, we see salmonella. So again, we oftentimes think of salmonella as being attributable to uh, undercooked meat and things like that, and that's certainly true, but our pets also can get the, those types of bacteria and then spread them to us. So just in the same types of ways that we want to protect our pets from getting sick uh, with from other pets, we want to obviously protect ourselves um, from getting diseases from our pets. Great, great information. Well, ta- let's talk about controlling the area. For example, most of these Halloween events are outdoors. Do we have to worry about wildlife and the environment and how they contribute to the spread of disease? Absolutely. So, so when we think about diseases, it's, it's, they're quite complex. So I had mentioned rabies a couple of times already. So if we think about that, certainly we see bats and we see raccoons and we see other skunks and other animals that can certainly transmit disease such as rabies. They can, they can bring with them ticks and fleas, which can spread diseases, and even something like leptospirosis. So for those of you that have heard of this, this bacteria, this is spread in the urine of infected wildlife generally. So having these animals uh, in and around places that our pets are going to spend time certainly increases the chances of our pets getting sick with some types of diseases. So whenever possible, trying to exclude wildlife from areas, uh, trying to make good decisions about where we have events, those can make a huge influence on the risks to our animals. You know, one really interesting aspect of your study was that you created a risk calculator. Tell us about that and how can dog owners and event coordinators use it to promote good pet health? One of the challenges with this whole area is is trying to bring information to people that need it and, and specifically target the right types of information. There's such, such a, just overwhelming amount that's out there. And so what the risk calculator does is in about five minutes, it walks you through a series of questions. So for instance, where is your animal going to be spending time? Um, what type of contact is it likely to have with other, other animals? Is it likely to have contact with, for instance, wildlife? Um, what type of preventative measures, such as vaccination, do you do? And then at the very end, it spits out some recommendations. And so it kind of helps the individual, whether they're a, a dog owner, whether they're an event coordinator, just distills the information and provides some general recommendations for ways to better protect your, those animals. Well, Dr. Stull, great information as you always provide us, and thank you for joining us today. Always a pleasure. Thanks for the opportunity. Well, that was veterinarian Dr. Jason Stull from the Ohio State University College of Veterinary Medicine talking about controlling the risk of spreading diseases at pet parades and other canine events, especially during this time of the year, Halloween. To learn more about Dr. Stull and his risk calculator, visit vet dot osu dot edu and of course you know we're going to post that information on our social media channels <laughs> well it's too soon to go but we got to wrap the show but before we go we want to give you a preview of next week's show next week we're talking about feral cats holistic pets health and wellness and pets as recruiting tools on college campuses special thanks to guest howard beige from Ruby's, author Layla Morgan Wild, and Dr. Jason Stull from the Ohio State College of Veterinary Medicine. Also, we got to thank EpiPet, our sponsor, the Animal Medical Center of Bradenton and EpiPet, making better skin coat and ear care products for healthier pets everywhere. And if you have a question, write us at team at thepetbuzz.com. We'll cover it on next week's show. And if you've missed any portion of this show, visit our social media channels as well as your favorite streaming channel and listen to the linked podcast on Monday morning. Most importantly, remember, we're here each week to help you take better care of your pets. Peace out and pet love. Goodbye. (laughs) Thank you for listening to this very special Halloween edition of the Pet Buzz. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> With Miss Charlotte Jekyll and Dr. Michael Hyde, we hope you have the most and bestest Halloween ever. 
<laughs> Even say pet buzz. <laughs> oh, see. You think it's funny. Shock the vampire when he says pet buzz. <laughs> Stop it. Come back here. Don't you run off on me. <laughs> Hey, my name is Rory Diamond. I am the CEO of Canines for Warriors. We are the nation's largest provider of service dogs for disabled American veterans. And we are asking everyone to support Puppies Assisting Wounded Service Persons Act, House Bill 3130. Absolutely critical to do this. It will require the VA to help organizations like Canines for Warriors serve our disabled veterans with incredible life-saving service dogs and to recover from post-traumatic stress. Please contact your member of Congress to support Puppies Assisting Wounded Service Persons Act, House Bill 3130. 